Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to case a card from the catalogue. Going to jump back into the annual catalogue. I know you've been seeing lots of things from the mini catalogue and celebration, but we need to not forget about the stuff in the annual catalogue. Before I get started, I want to apologise first for my lack of presence for my Facebook Lives. I haven't done a live uh, regularly since oh late last year sometime. Um, I started a new medication in December, early or late November, early December, um, for my neuralgia. And I'll tell you what, those drugs, oh, they are bad. They treated the pain wonderfully, but geez, they um, play around with your head, change your mood, change your whole outlook on life, change everything. And I struggled with that medication. I'm off that medication now. Woohoo! So I am back and hopefully back to doing regular lives. But that was tough. So I'm praying that the pain stays away and doesn't come back. If you are a praying person, please pray for me. Um, the pain, neuralgia pain is nasty. Um, so that's my apology for not being around. Now uh, hopefully I'm back and going to do regular live. So this is the first. I put a notice up on my Facebook saying I was here at 2pm today, going to do a live, going to case the catalogue. And then I also posted about the in colours. And out of the in colours of Cinnamon Cider, Misty Moonlight, Magenta Madness, Bumblebee and Just Jade, which was your favourite? Well, it was a tie between Magenta Madness and Just Jade. So I'm going to case a card from the catalogue using those colours. So we're going to go all the way to page 104 to the Zany Zebras stamp set and we are going to case this beautiful card here going to keep it nice and simple and hopefully you'll learn some tips and tricks along the way and I'm going to show you how easy it is to copy what they've done in the catalogue and it's really not daunting daunting don't, what's the word yeah it's really not that daunting I can't speak but anyway if you're here and watching jump in say hello if you think I'm a little loopy that's all okay that's part of my lives I am who I am <laughs> all right so I don't think I've used my Zany Zebra stamp set. No, I haven't. So if you're a beginner, you're new to stamping, our rubber stamps come like this. A sheet of rubber stamps and a sheet of stickers. So, so easy to put together. You're first going to find your uh, zebra. So I'm going to use this dude. Actually, I'll, do all, I'll mount all the zebras. So I just take them out of the rubber. Lots of different ways you can do this, and I'll show you two ways that I intermittently change between. I've seen some other great ways to do it as well. But you find your zebra in this case. So that is that dude. All right, so you turn the label sheet over to the shiny side, and that's dull, you'll feel the difference. And on the shiny side, each of these stickers has a line down the middle where you're going to tear the backing off. So you take the backing off your stamp, peel away the two sides of the sticker backing from the sticker sheet. And then if you're really good at lining things up, you stick your grey rubber side of the foam onto your sticker. And every time I do this, I cross my fingers and hopefully I stick it in the right place. Once these are on, you can't get them off. If you do it a little bit sideways, a bit wonky, that's how it's going to stay. Most of the time I'm okay if it's a little bit off-centered, but that's, that's not too bad. That's pretty perfect. Wow, didn't think I'd be able to do that. An easier way is to use this rubber as a template. So let's do our kicking little zebra here. Find him on the sheet. It's probably easier if you do it while they're still in the sheet. Is that him? That's him. Um, we're going to find our sticker here. Take the backing off it. And you're going to line up your sheet. Now your sticker sheet is exactly the same laid out as your rubber. So you're going to pop it over the top. It's not going to stick. To anything because it has the protective backing on the other side of this rubber sheet. 
take the backing off your stamp. Make sure it is lined up. Now, my caveat here is that I'm not going to stick my head right over the top because then all you're going to see is my grey hairs. So hopefully it's lined up. Hold everything really still. Right, and just pop your stamp back in its little hole. Sometimes this um, moves around, slips a little bit, so you've got to hold it and be really careful. All right, and then just peel up your stamp and there's the sticker on it. Now, I did have that off-centered. There's a little bit hanging off here of the um, sticker and a little bit here that's not covered. But that's not a disaster. It's not going to worry me because when I go to stamp, I can still see which generally which way he is so I should be fine with that so now we've got two let's do our third little dude um, this one so I'm going to try and just stick him on like I did the first one now I saw another way someone did was they put oh, I can't remember something with an acrylic block and a I can't remember what it was now Oh, but it was another way you can do it using an acrylic block. If I find that, I will um, share it on my page or in my group. So there we go. We have our cute little zebras all mounted. Now, you don't have to use the stickers if you don't want to. You can, on the back of the stamps, still put them on the, the acrylic block. They'll stay to a certain degree. You can use a little bit of removable tape if you've got the... Um, can't remember the official name but there's a tape runner you can get that's got um, removable glue like I used to call it glue dotty glue um, years and years ago when I used to um, teach scrapbooking I'm not even sure if they make it anymore but it's like removable so you can put it on and then rub it off with your finger and it all comes off you can use something like that or even our Tombow glue a little bit on the back of your this is without putting the label on a little bit on the back of the stamp let it get dry and tacky and then you can put that on and off the acrylic block so lots of different ways you don't like putting your stickers on but it's worth taking the time to put your stickers on because um, it just makes it easier to see all your stamps particularly when it comes to sentiment sometimes it's hard to read the red rubber what the actual sentiment is if you've got your stamp on there it's so much easier and lining them up when you're putting stickers on I've shown you a few different ways and to know what stamp what sticker goes on what stamp use your red rubber um, sheet as a guide because they're in the same place as on the sticker sheets all right so I'm just going to mount the rest of these really quickly if this is boring and you know how to do this take a lead a, a lead that's a new word take a, a wee break go get a drink Check your emails. We're going to get on to card making in a minute. If you are watching this live on Facebook, you will see the live, red live, in I think the top left corner. If you're watching a replay, just um, comment replay and any questions, any comments, I will come back to. If you're watching it on YouTube, this is a uh, replay of a Facebook live that you're watching. So I'm not actually live right now if you're watching on YouTube. I still leave a comment below and I will come back to you. So I hope everyone is well. We've all having a wonderful week. I know it's only Monday, isn't it? But still, you can have a good week so far. Hey Linda, how are you? Did I already say hello? I don't know if I did. <laughs> I have a memory like a goldfish. So it really doesn't take long to put all the stickers on your stamps. Sorry if you can hear my puppy in the background. He is going to doggy obedience school. Started uh, Sunday yesterday. First time. That's a learning curve for me more than him I think. Oh my goodness. So this is our first dog we've ever owned, so um, I think we need more training than he does. <laughs> but he's okay. His barks a lot. We need to get control of the barking, I think. I'm hoping someone else is out there. 
Let's throw other people in the house. So let's throw other people to go cook on him for barking. But whether they do, I don't know. All right, two more to do, and then we are done mounting our stamps. Oh, this is a little one in the sticker didn't want to come off. I mean, the backing didn't want to come off the sticker. And you'll see these are clean and they they stick to everything, but they come off. But like that was stuck to my thumb then. Little ones like that are hard to get off sometimes. Oh no, it's stuck to my sheet. Alright, we are nearly done. Just make sure I get this around the right way. Okay. Now, when you store your stamps, you can keep the rubber outline. Some people do. They like to put this in here and then they know when they have all their stamps. Uh, I can't be bothered doing that. So, um, I'm the only one using my stamps. So, I just pop them in stick them all to the case they aren't going to go anywhere they're all held there quite securely in the stamps like this and some of these stamp sets you got lots of room to play with others you've got to be a bit more neater with how you arrange them nothing much you can do with that you can keep um, this and use off cuts on your old stamps that are not the new um, clean style but we do actually sell separate clean sheets so that you can um, transfer or, um, all your old stamps into the clean stamps. Alright, so now we're going to make a card or two. So we're making this card here, which is just a card base, a couple of layers, some stamping and an easy, easy sentiment. So if I put that on that side, is that still in view so that you can keep a check on what I'm making and then I'm still making it right? And I am actually copying it. Why do we never have enough room on our desks? Tell me that. Alright, so the two colours picked as favourites were Just Jade and Magenta Madness. So I'm going to make the Just Jade one first. So this is what we call a portrait card. So it sits portrait uh, landscape, sorry, not portrait, landscape mode, and then opens up from the bottom. And if you're not sure how to make a card base, this, these are so, so easy. You just grab an A4 piece of cardstock. Now, I understand a lot of you watching are card makers and you know how to do this. But there's the people who want to get into card making and don't know how to do it. So this is targeted at them. If you already know how to do this, again, just ignore me. So you're going to cut this sheet in half at 5 and 7 eighths. That's what I do. Alright, now I've got two pieces of cardstock two card bases. Move the trim it out of the way. I only make one card. So I'm going to fold this in half. You could score it in half if you wanted and um, get the perfect measurements but I I just fold and use my bone folder and there we have our card base ready to go. Alright. So then the next layer we have is the blue underneath and I think I was going to do, uh, what's this, uh, cinnamon, I don't know whether I should do cinnamon cider, I might do cinnamon cider. Alright, so for this layer, I have no measurements for this so I'm going to just roughly work it out. So my card, and I work in inches, so this piece, they have a rectangle here. So I'm going to make it, let's do five and a half by four. So I'm measuring my card and going, mm, my four might be too much. So let's do three and a half. So what I say, five and a half by three and a half. And we'll see what happens. So this is how easy it is to make a card from the catalogue. You don't need precise measurements. You can just um, look at it and go, oh well, if it doesn't turn out the same, at least I've used it as inspiration. So that layer is simply going to go on there. Now I like where that's sitting. 
And when you do make a card from the catalogue, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Casing is copying and selectively editing or copying and just copying. So I'm selectively editing when it doesn't, that's what I say I'm doing, when it doesn't work out exactly the same as in the catalogue, I'm selectively editing. So here we go. We have our first layer and now we need our little zebras. So I just need a sheet of white and I'm going to make that five and a half by, we'll make it a little bit, um, oops, that's too big, five and a half. And then I might make this one four. I can always chop it down. No, I might make three and a half. Let me measure my zebras. I don't want it too much bigger than my zebras. So that's, uh, let's use these little dudes. Three. Now we get to stamp. So you can see our cling stamps, that stamp is not going anywhere, that is staying put. Just going to use my memento black ink. I'm just going to stamp three little zebras. Get up their heels, having a party. I'm going to start in the middle. Hopefully he's in the middle. And then one to the side. Doesn't matter if it goes off the page a little bit, the paper a little bit, that's fine. It's like plane chasings or something around the paddock. Now this card has a shadow down the bottom. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of the colour that we have in the card base and I'm going to use cinnamon cider for our shadow. So that's this little stamp set here. Hi Janice, how are you? Thank you for joining me. Hope you're having a lovely day. So I'm just making um, a card, casing a card from the catalogue. I'm just wondering if I need to stamp off first because that might be a bit dark. Let me try it. Yeah. So I'm going to stamp off, which means I'm just going to take some of the ink off the stamp. So I've inked it up with the ink pad. If I had a stamp on my card, that's how dark it is. I don't know if I want it that dark. I might want it a little bit lighter. So then I've stamped again without re-inking and I can even get another stamp out of that. So I'm thinking that third one is what I want. I don't want it to overpower. So I've inked up the stamp, I'm going to stamp off once, stamp off twice, and then on to my project. So if ever you see a um, instructions on a card and they say stamp off, that's what they're talking about. Right, I've got a halo. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that close. But I have excess ink on my stamp around there. You can probably see it means I've pressed too hard into the ink pad or I've rolled my stamp and I've got ink where it shouldn't be. If I stamp on my project, I'm going to end up with that on my card and I don't want that on my card. It's called a halo and it's what we want to avoid at all costs. So I'm going to clean that off just with a wipe and then try again. All right, so you need to tap lightly. I probably went oof too hard. So I'm going to stamp off once, stamp off twice, and then third time under my little zany zebra. Alright, inked it up, stamped off once, stamped off twice, and then under my little zebra. Okay, so I'm going to leave the ink pad there, and I want to put in, they have the little stars here around the zebras, so it's a itty bitty tiny teeny star stamp. I'm going to do the same with the stars. We're going to, yeah. Again, I want to ink off so they're not very dark. Just a slight little, I've got another, oops, got another halo. So I'm tapping too hard, pushing too hard into my ink pad. Tap. 
And with these tiny, tiny stamps are hard to get a proper um, image. You've got to be, like, take your time. I'm probably rushing it because I'm mindful. I don't want to keep you all day. Hey, Janice, how are you? I mean, I already said, how are you? Oh, see? Never even a goldfish. Had a busy day, have you? Good busy? Not so good busy. Alright, so I'm just going to concentrate here with another halo. And another reason if you keep getting halos is your stamp is too small for the size block that you're using. So it gives you more of an opportunity to wiggle it. Um, so I really need to not wiggle a stamp. Be really mindful when I go into the ink pad. It's not the end of the world if you get a halo on your project. That's what embellishments are for. But I prefer to not have to do it. Alright, one more of these pesky little stars. Oh, there we go. Oh, that is so cute. Alright, so we finished with the cinnamon cider now. We are going to pop that on our card. And I might put them straight. Alright, just going to glue them on. Housework, washing, nothing exciting. It's a holiday today. Oh, where are you? That's a holiday. I mean, it could be a holiday in Queensland, I tell you, and I wouldn't know. I don't know what day it is, seriously. I wonder how much longer I can use the excuse, but I've only been living here for a certain amount of time, so I don't know when all the holidays and things are. Three years today since we moved into this house. Wow, that time has flown. All right, so now we want a little sentiment up here. And I might do that in Just Jade. I'm going to keep it just those two colours. I was going to use uh, more colours, but I think I want to keep it just those two. All right, so we're going to stamp our sentiment. New Zealand Way Tangy Weekend. Oh, yeah, of course. I saw a few posts on that. Happy... Is it, is it say happy way tangy? I'm probably pronouncing it very wrong. Apologies if I am. Okay, so you know what? You can do a sentiment down here and up there. Let's do happy birthday. And then let's do, not really kick up your heels because you should have been up more if you was kicking up. I put it a bit flat <coughs> so they're more running. They're running. Way tangy. Oh, good, I did it perfectly. Let's do Wild About You. That's that one. Right, so, another block. Gonna do these in black on the coloured cardstock so they stand out. Hopefully, <clears throat> I can get them lined up. I'm going to do one from this end because I want to do a tail on that end. And then this one from this side because I want to do a tail on this side. There we go. We are nearly finished this card. Those zebras are so cute. Right. Now we're just going to trim these. Do our tail. Easy way to do your tail. Oh, hang on. Wait, you're going to trim it straight, Narelle. There we go. Cut up the middle and then in from each corner to where you've cut. Right, a happy birthday is going to go up there. 
and our wild about you. Down there. All right, we are nearly done. Okay, dimensionals. Sorry if my head's in the way. I want to make sure that it's straight. Here we go. There's our first card. So I have, sorry about that noise. I've cased the catalog, which means I've copied the catalog and I've used this one as inspiration changed it up a little bit but that's perfectly fine so what I thought I'd do is make a portrait card so you can see <coughs> sorry you can see a card you might like but you might be a fan of just landscape cards like this or portrait cards or you want to change it up a little bit I'm going to show you how easy it is to create this as a portrait card so and because the second favorite color on my vote on my poll was Magenta Madness. We're going to make a Magenta Madness portrait card. Oh my gosh, this is so bright. Same thing, you're going to cut this cardstock in half. This is an A4 sheet of cardstock and we want it this way because I like to tent cards. So let's cut this in half which is four and one eighth. You can convert it in Google if you need the centimetre conversion, but 4 and 1 8 inches. And I have two long strips of cardstock, very bright cardstock. It is a cute set, Janice, isn't it? No little people in your lives at the moment. Oh, but it is cute. All right, so we're just going to fold it again in half. Use a bone folder to make a nice crisp crease. And then again, we just need our bottom layer, which I think we'll do misty moonlight for this one. So I can't remember what the measurements were. What were they? Five and a half by four or something. Five and a half. And this is where I usually, you know, go by the seat of my pants, fly by the seat of my pants and not measure anything. I did three and three and a half. Whoops. Throwing it away. Three and a half. So it's going to be our bottom layer. And then we need another piece of white. See, memory of a goldfish. I can't remember what this was. And I cut it like five minutes ago. Five and a half by three. So this should already be five and a half that way maybe. by three. All right, so let's glue that one on. I'm not doing anything to this one. These are nice simple cards that you uh, should be able to get a few done in a relatively short amount of time. Perfect for keeping on hand when the Kids have to go to friends' birthday parties at the last minute, or you know, you find out you've forgotten someone's birthday, you need a card really quick. These are perfect. Alright, so I'm going to do all three zebras for this one. So let's do all of them. Why not? Why are they all going to fit, actually? I didn't think of that too long. Oh, they might. Let's see if they're going to fit. They might not, actually. So, we could just do these two, I think. We might not fit three 
on here so let's just do two so this is how you can change things up on the fly you know just have a play you don't need to know exactly what you're doing before you start I'm going to put him down a little bit because I want to put a sentiment up the top and then this guy I want him down the bottom because I'm going to put a sentiment in the middle, I think. And then up the top, or should I put one on the bottom? Yeah, let's put it on the bottom. Alright, so there's our zebras. Cute. Uh, we need our stars. I'm going to put some stars on this one, but I need to clean that stamp first. Bright Magenta Madness stars. I love the name of our stamp sets. So did I just pause? I know something just weird happened on my screen when I looked up. I don't know whether that my internet dropped out or what's what went on. Alright, so this one. Oh, I didn't stamp that properly. Look at that. There. I'm just stamping off once. I didn't stamp that again properly. <laughs> I need to focus on this stamp. I know I'm going blurry. Is that what's happening to everyone? Alright, there must be people in this house playing games on the internet because my um my um screen keeps going blurry. Oh no! Alright. Stop. Look at my stars. They're not stamping properly. I'm not being careful enough. So this is why there's two sides to every sheet of card swap. <gasps> Look at that. Let's start again. Now I have, when you, um, sorry. When you use your trimmer sometimes you'll end up with a slight edge on your card swap on the wrong side. So let's just flatten that with a bone holder. Is it very staticky today? Okay. Uh, Alright, tell the family next time to get off. Sorry about that. No. Oh, wait, wrong side. Alright, let's do our little zebras again. Now let's try these stars. There we go. That's better. Let's get rid of this baby wipe before I end up putting it on the card. Because there is no third side of this card. Stop. <laughs> oh, look at that last one. Eh. Oh, it is what it is. I'm not going to fret over one little missed star. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Thanks for jumping on. Right, so there we have our zebras, and it's going to sit like that. Now we just need our sentiments. So again, I'm just going to use the same sentiments, why not? And do the same thing I did with the last one. So I'm just going to stamp it from one side. Stamp the other sentiment on the other side. Try 
trim it. Alright. So it's a little bit better now. The sound and then the quality. I just heard my son come out of his room, so obviously he's finished playing his game. That should help it somewhat. <laughs> Teenagers, hey. Oh my goodness. They're in the online games. You probably say, oh, but mum, I had to grind to get this tank or this warship or something. I don't know. Tara doesn't want to cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. No, I was doing cut to that, the point. So keep going till it's cut. Here we go. Yay. It was harder than it needed to be. My goodness. Zebras. These are so cute, these guys. So they're just as effective, not coloured, but obviously it's a line drawing stamp, so you can colour them if you want as well, but I think they look just as good not coloured, just like stamped one colour. They look fine. And I have a dirty splotch mark there. I'm not sure if you can see that bit of a dark mark. So we are going to cover that with our sentiment and then no one's going to know. Oh, Actually, these cards would be perfect for around one of my cousin's little ones. She's got twin twins, a boy and a girl. So they just had their birthdays, though. Maybe next year's birthdays. Well, there's an idea. Here we go. So we have our two cards cased from the catalog. One, la one landscape, one portrait. This is what we were casing. Okay, that card there I took as my inspiration. So this, the idea of this was to show you how you can look at a card in a catalog and go, you know, I can make that. Even if you think you can't, you can make it. You just got to break it down into steps. So obviously you're going to start with the card base and then look at the layers from the bottom up. What is it that's on that bottom layer? That is just a rectangle of plain cardstock. I can cut a rectangle of plain cardstock and stick it on my card. We just did that there. Then the next layer, we've just got some zebras stamped on another white rectangle of cardstock. You don't need measurements. Once you start with your card base, you go, well, okay, so it's a little bit shorter than my card base for all directions. I'll just cut a bit of cardstock shorter than my card than my card base. And there I have my layers. And then it's just stamping, adding on your sentiments. So, and the other thing was to show you how you can switch a design to be the other angle, the other way, portrait. So this is a landscape and we've changed it to a portrait. And we haven't done exactly the same on the portrait one we've changed it up because three of the zebras wouldn't fit this way so we changed it to like, oh well i only got two but that still looks just as good and i've used two different zebras rather than three the same so i hope this has helped you and that if you are new to stamping please don't be scared get in there have a go and have a look at something Break it up into the little each little component. Don't look at it as a whole because that will be too overwhelming. So have a look at it layer by layer from bottom to top to work out what it is you need to do. And if it if it looks too much, then go well. I'm just I've got a stamp I can stamp three times on a on a card front and be done with it. Like it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be fancy. 
Um, it doesn't have to be uh, really, really special. It just needs to be done. So, you know, people love receiving handmade cards. And to think that you went to the time and effort to make something for them is just something really special. So, have a go. If you need help, please comment below. If you have any questions, please email me. <coughs> Sorry, Narell at simplystampingwithnarell.com. And I can answer any questions and help you out. If you're watching this on YouTube and... Um, you have any comments again any questions sorry you can email me subscribe to the video if you like it if you're watching this on Facebook then please like my page so that you'll see um, <clears throat> all the updates and things I put on my page and subscribe to my newsletter I'll have all the links in the comments above so yeah thanks for watching I hope this has helped you out and have a fantastic day and get crafty soon because it's great for the soul Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.